Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the T55 uh, build series. Um, if you haven't already, please hit the like and subscribe. Um, and you can follow along with this build series and check out the previous videos. Um, yeah, so we're getting to the stage now where we need to put the tracks together. So in the kit itself, um, we get the rubber band tracks. They're not the best. Um, so we've gone out and we've purchased some mini art T55 early type RMSH T55 tracks. So they're dead simple. Um, they come in this box um, and they come as the track links and then you get these pins as well. All plastic. Um, so should be fairly straightforward, he says. So instructions are on the back of the box. So we've got these track links and then we insert these pins. It's telling us no glue, which means that they will be uh, workable, essentially. Um, it's also telling us that for ease of assembly, they come on this kind of uh, sprue gate here or piece of sprue that we can insert the tracks. Oh, sorry, the pins into the tracks. Um, and there we go. And each side should be 91 links, um, essentially. Um, and then down at the bottom here, we've got a colour call out um, telling us what we need to paint them in. Um, but we'll come on to that later. So what I've actually done um, is I have separated them all out into a tub of pins and a tub of links themselves. Uh, just cheap plastic tubs. So we get the link itself. Um, and the detail's pretty good. And they do require a little bit of cleanup. This one hasn't been cleaned up yet, as you can see. So we've got essentially where we've removed it from the sprue. We've got this point here and these two points here. Um, but they will clean up fairly easily. And then we've got these uh, these bits here, which so you get four pins per um, per sprue, essentially. Um, so the way we're going to do this is we'll cut them off here, insert them in with some tweezers, um, and then we'll remove this kind of bit here, uh, which should leave just the pin in the uh, in the track links. So that's the the box itself. As I said, I've separated them all out off camera. Uh, very easy to do and that's it so let's crack on and let's get some of these together um, and see see how they work and see how good they are or how bad depending um, but yeah let's go i have assembled five links here um, which as you can see we've got the pins in um, in the sides However, these pins do not fit tightly. Um, so I have had to put a dab of extra thin in uh, just to hold the pins in place. Um, but they do still move. Um, so as long as you don't smother them in glue, you will still have that ability um, to make them workable. So I'm going to show you how, how to do it, basically. Um, it's not complicated. It's just very, very time consuming. So they come on these uh, sort of sprues. So you get two track links uh, with four pins. Um, so obviously two each side. Um, they will require some cleanup when you cut them off. Um, so I'm going to show you how I do that now. So using your sprue cutters, remove the track from the link and um, remove the track link from the, the sprue itself and then you'll see here that we've got these um, sort of bits that need cleaning up so the way we're going to do that is take a sharp blade and trim the excess off very gently we don't need to go mental because we don't want to damage the actual link itself and, it, and end up with a gap in the track so very gently with the sharp blade just trim that down as much as we can and you will have one on the center on this side. So again, just trim that as best you can. And then we're gonna go in 
with one of the UMP thinner sticks, uh, which is a 400 grit. And over all of them, we're just going to now just tidy those up. Literally no effort at all. Um, and there we go. We've got that kind of smooth edge now. But what we have done is put a little bit of a key in it with the sander across all of them. Um, so should we need to add glue, it's got a bit of a rough texture now to, uh, to key to. Now, you can only fit these one way. So we've got the three links this side and the three gaps this side. So that just slots into place. It kind of clicks. What you must make sure is that you're on a flat surface, hence the cutting mat. Then we're going to use these two pins. So the pins themselves are these bits here. So from here, this way, that's the actual pin. But they come on these very handy uh, bits of sprue here. So if we hold on to them and cut them off in their entirety, like so, put that one there so it's out of the way. Now, what you'll be left with, so use, I'll use some tweezers to show you this. You're going to need probably some tweezers to do this. Um, there we go. Dropped it. These are tiny. But as you can see, if it will focus, it's not going to, is it? There we go. <laughs> so, as we can see, oh, we're not going to focus at all. There we go. So we've got the pin itself on this bit of sprue and that bit of sprue is really handy to get this in place. So we'll pop those there. Now what you're gonna need to do is uh, where you're gonna join the, uh, the track links is take a little bit of extra thin, and I mean a tiny dab, um, and essentially in the hole just a tiny dab of glue like so don't need much at all now what we're going to do while while that's sort of curing and that glue is going off which is what we want it to do that gives us time then to move on to the next link so we'll do that in exactly the same way Remember where you put your pins. I mean, if you want to use like a little pot or something to keep them in, that, that would probably help. You're not going to lose them then. But for this, I'm only going to show you one um, because they'll all be done in exactly the same way. So we'll just clean that link up. Like so. And again, just go in with the sand there. trim it all off okay so that glue is obviously going off now as I said these can only go one way so we'll fit that in make sure it's nice and flat and the glue's already there so then you're gonna pick up your pin by the sprue that it comes on make sure it's nice and flat and then if I move my finger out of the way so you can see, that will locate into the track and it kind of pushes home and you feel like a bit of a, a positive connection almost um, as, it, as it slots in. And the glue, the extra thin, will hold that in place. Then another tiny bit of glue just on the end just to make sure that we're not going to lose these pins. Because if these pins come out, the tracks won't hold. Um, particularly when we start manipulating them around road wheels and drive sprockets and that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, once they're in place, then take your sprue cutters. You can actually pick that up now. So take your sprue cutters and nice and flush, cut that off like so and like so 
And then what that will give you is these um, tracks that are pinned together. Take a steel ruler or something, you know, flat, straight, um, and just make sure they're all in the right place. And then you can just bed them down like so. And then that, that glue will fully sort of cure and dry um, over time. And then you're left with these tracks, which are workable. So they do manipulate, which is what we're after. Um, so that's how we're gonna do the tracks. According to the instructions, there should be 91 of these links each side, which means what, 182 pins. Um, they're all in the box. Um, it just takes time. As you can see, it's not difficult, um, but it does take some time to do this. But the end result will be worth it because they'll be much better than the, the rubber tracks. Um, so as you can see, you know, they're, they're very well detailed um, and they're going to weather up paint and weather up really nicely. But it's just going to take some time, which I'm not going to do on camera. So that's how I'm going to do the tracks. And uh, we'll move on with the rest of the build. OK, so we've got the majority of the tracks together now, um, but I've just picked a small section. Excuse the state of my fingers, painting and airbrushing. Um, so I'm going to show you how how I'm painting them, essentially. So contrary to what you see all the time, tracks are not silver. Uh, they are metal, but they're not silver. So with these old T55 tracks, they are completely metal. There's no sort of rubberized pads or anything like that. So we're priming them in UMP black primer. And then hopefully you can see there, there is a metallic uh, sheen to these tracks here. Uh, which are obviously this dark grey colour. So to do that, we use Tamiya LP Dark Iron. Um, now, the vehicle we're, we're building, we're trying to depict it in a urban um, environment. So Mogadishu, although there will be a lot of dust and stuff hanging around because of where it is in the world, there's not going to be that heavy mud, grass and all that stuff that, that traditionally you would weather tracks with. Um, so the way we're going to do this is use dry brushing. Uh, to try and emulate and replicate dust, essentially. So the first colour we're going to use uh, is a Citadel colour, which is Carrick Stone, uh, which is kind of this sort of beigey, sandy type colour. Um, and we're going to dry brush some of that onto the tracks. So we're using a, a fairly large, cheap uh, flat brush. And then we'll take the track and we just start to run the brush over it. And what this will do is it will start to put a colour, sandy, dusty colour, onto the raised areas of the track. Now, what you've got to bear in mind when you're painting or weathering any track is that there are areas of this track that will naturally come into contact with the road surface they'll come into contact with um the road wheels and the drive sprockets and all the rest of it uh, where you will go down to sort of bare metal um and i'll show you how we're going to do that or how i do it rather uh, there are a million and one ways to weather tracks and what you have to be really conscious of is that you're trying to do it in such a way that it replicates um, the environment that, that that vehicle is operating in or what you're trying to show that vehicle operating in. Um, there's no point in an urban environment putting heavy mud and grass on the tracks. It's just not. I think the worst mistake um, that you can do really is, is just paint them silver um, because tracks aren't like that if you look at any reference pictures uh, they're, they're just not like that so that's the Carrick stone uh, which is, is is the basis of this then we're going to use another citadel color called shabti bone which is a much lighter sandy color essentially and we're going to do exactly the same so we're going to dry brush this we're not going to clean our brush in between 
Um, so what will happen there is that the Carrick stone and the Abshabti bone will start to mix. Um, so we get this kind of natural transition um, and that, that's what we're after. So we get that on the tracks and as you can see, it's a lot lighter than um, the Carrick stone and it should bring out a lot more of the, the sort of surface detail that these tracks from Mini Art have. Um, so there we go. That's what we're trying to do. Obviously, as these tracks bend, as we attach them to the vehicle, we will get dark areas in between the, the links. That's absolutely fine. This technique works exactly the same on rubber band tracks if you want to use those. The UMP primer as the base coat in black, what that will do, um, because the, a property of the UMP primer is that it, that it will bend slightly. So normally on rubber band tracks, you can sometimes get cracking of the paint as you, as you put them on the vehicle. That I've never had that happen with UMP ever. Um, and obviously the, the LP over the top of the UMP, there's no issue with. Lack of paint by its very nature is very hard wearing. Um, and you don't risk damaging the rubber because you've got that base UMP acrylic primer on first. It creates a barrier between the, the lack of paint and the rubber. I've never had an issue doing that at all when I've used the rubber bands. So there we go. So that's the kind of effect we're trying to achieve is this dusty, um, dusty feeling and dusty appearance of, of the tracks. Now, what we need to do, so where these guide horns are on the track, which are these sticky out bits in the middle, that obviously they come into contact with the road wheels all the time. Um, so what we can do is just use a normal pencil and just around the edges do that and what that does is it gives us this metallic I mean you could do this sort of an edge highlighting um, technique with a paintbrush and a, and a, and a silver color or metallic color but with a pencil if that will show let it focus let's move that away if we let that focus there, you can see that it gives us, let's do that. There we go. Keep my hand behind it. So you can see that we've got this sort of scratched metallic -y feel to the guide horns, which is what we're after. You'd struggle, or I struggle, to replicate that with a paintbrush. So then on these sort of bits here that run along the length, or sorry, the width of the track is where the tracks would come into contact with the road surface. So again, with the pencil, we can just rub the side of the, uh, the pencil across these bits. And what that will do, and this is just a normal HB pencil. It's not one of the expensive graphite sticks or anything like that. And what that will do is give us a metallic feel or a metallic appearance without having to paint the track silver. So there you can see we've got this metallic -y scratched appearance on, on the tracks themselves mixed in with these sort of dust effects um, that we were after. And that's exactly what we want because this tank is operating in this, this urban environment. So I'm gonna go around, I'll do all the tracks in this way, but I just wanted to show you how I do it. Um, and that is essentially it, that is how we do it. So uh, yeah, let's get some road wheel painted. That's what we need to do, see you in a minute. Okay, so, Road wheels have been painted in exactly the same way as as we showed in the, in the base color painting video. Um, so UMP black primer and then UMP white primer on the bits that are going to be white. Obviously, we have these um, 
rubber tires around the rim of the road wheels now when i showed assembly of these we showed scratching these and, and creating this rough texture um, so now we need to paint them now there are various ways of doing this you can mask the center um, or you can paint the road or the rubber tires first mask the outside and then spray the inside to me i prefer brush painting them people will criticize that and say it takes too long whatever i've not found that um i found it time-wise very comparable um so get yourself a good quality brush this is a artist opus zero series s and then i'm going to be using vallejo german gray and just very gently mixed about 50 50 just with normal water paint around the edge of the rubber tire like so if you get a bit on just remove it with your finger like that and so on and so on so just be careful the brush i'm making a right mess of this because i'm on camera so if that's happening just get yourself a q-tip a little moist and what you can do is just remove that but you have to do it straight away obviously before the paint dries like so it's because i'm on camera i don't normally have that much of a problem um, and just paint the edges around and because you've thinned the paint what it should do is almost capillary action right down into the rim like so as i say if you have made a bit of a mistake just moist and q-tip you won't damage your primer around and just remove where you might have made a mistake like so then all you're going to do is essentially you're going to paint the the actual tire itself now you've got this texture to it but because we've already primed in black if there is a little bit of an area where you know we we miss with the german gray it doesn't really matter because we've painted in black so it creates a natural shadow anyway which is why i was priming black lovely so we go around we do the rest of the wheel we've painted the other side as well do the rest of the wheel let that dry um, and then essentially leave those well alone then until we come on to the weathering phase um, and we weather them very similar to we weathered the tracks um, so that the two match really so we've got our weathered track here um, and we're going to weather this in a very similar way obviously it will sit on like so um, and we're going to weather it in a, in a very, very similar way. So there's no issue with that at all. Um, so that's it. That's the road wheels. Thanks for watching. I hope you may have picked something up. Comments are welcome. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. Um, go and visit umpretail.com. Go and visit emodels.co.uk. Um, and I'll see you next time where we'll be on to the, the weathering of this T55. Um, so I'll see you next time. Till then, stay safe. Happy hobby.